What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can add custom fonts into your iOS app and of course how to use them. So here we are on an Apple developer documentation page talking about the process of how to do this. Obviously, we're not gonna read this because otherwise you would have just read it. We're gonna do this together and look through an example. There's a few steps involved and they're definitely not too hard, but uh, you know, we, we'll go through the motions together. So make sure you hit the like button as per usual, get Xcode ready, get excited. If you're a returning viewer, hit subscribe while you're at it. I usually don't call it out, but hit the notification bell as well if you'd like to know uh, whenever I upload a new video. Um, stay up to date. That said, let's get into the video. All right, we're gonna begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We're gonna stick with the app template and I'm gonna go ahead and call this custom fonts. Go ahead and continue. We'll save it to our desktop. And let's expand this window to give ourselves a little more room to work here. And I also got a simulator booted up. So we're gonna pick that from the list. I believe it's a 12 Pro Max and hit the run button to just get our empty app building and showing up here, just like that. And let's talk about custom fonts. So the first thing we need to do is actually bring in some custom fonts. So I actually just Googled Roboto, fairly popular font, and I downloaded this. It has a bunch of the different Roboto fonts in it. And what I'm gonna do is simply drag this whole folder into the project. Of course, if you have any of your own fonts uh, or if you wanna find custom fonts, you can Google them and find them fairly easily. So let's drag that in. When we get this, make sure this first box is checked as well as the target checkbox. Go ahead and include it. And just like that, we have brought in the files into our project, but before we can use them, we need to register them with our app. And that's really the root of how we go ahead and use custom fonts. Now, before we even register them, one thing that's interesting and useful to know is how do you see a list of all of the fonts available to your app? Well, currently there isn't a simple way to do that, but there is a few lines of code we can write to see that actually. So I'm actually gonna write it here in the app delegate. So let's go into this first function, which is application did finish launching. And what I'm gonna say in here is UI font, and I'm gonna say font, what I wanna say is families, here we go, family names for each. And I'm gonna say name in. And from the name, we can say let font is UI font. And I want to get font names for family name. And this returns a, a collection of strings and we're gonna say the name is name. And actually what we'll do is we're gonna loop over this one as well and we're just gonna print out that name. So we're gonna say for name in this, let me call this font name since we already use name, we are going to print out a line break and then the font name. Go ahead and hit Command R to build and run and you'll see in your console, there will be a pretty long list of fonts printed out here. So why do we care about the list of fonts? Well, what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna go to the R section right here and we're gonna make sure that Roboto is not in this list. So Roboto is definitely not in this list. This list is alphabetized. The first R font is Rockwell. So now we're gonna go ahead and register those custom fonts and you'll see once we run it again, we're gonna actually see our fonts in there. So how do we register a font? So we actually register it in the info.plist and the way we do it is by providing the name of the file to uh, Xcode, basically. So let's say we wanna bring in, uh, let's do roboto-bold italic. So obviously if we select it, it opens up there, but we wanna copy that name and we wanna first bring in fonts provided by application. And this is an array, as you can see, there's one item in here already. And if we open this up, all we need to do is provide in the name of the font file here. So it's a .ttf. So I just pasted that in there. Most of the fonts you're gonna ever use are .ttfs or .otf. I don't think there's an, an OTF that we brought in here, but some fonts do use that format. So go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. And once again, let's get to that R section. Print T's, 
and here we are. So here is Roboto bold italic, which is the one we just registered. Now, how do we actually use this font? So we use it like any other font. And to do so, to demonstrate, I'm going to do it with uh, a label, of course. So go ahead and create a label. And we're going to create it like this with a frame. And we get that parenthesis right. So we're going to do CZ rect 00, 0, 300, and 100. We are going to say label.text is my font. We're going to add it as a subview. We are going to center it in our view as well. And most importantly, we want to update its font. So we're going to say label.font is going to be a UI font with a name. And the name is going to be the name we see printed out here. Generally, the name that's registered is the same name as the font file, but not always, which is why printing it out is helpful. And of course, we're going to give it a size. So we'll give it 32. Let's go ahead and hit Command R to build and run, and let's see what that looks like. So clearly, it's bold and italic, which is uh, the font we expected. So let's register one more and see the difference. And then we'll also go over a technique, because this is pretty fragile. It's pretty uh, prone to typos and errors. So I'll show you guys a technique to clean that up a little bit. So let's register something that looks a little different. I see Roboto Light here, which is definitely a different looking font. So all I'm going to do in this array is we're going to go ahead and hit this little plus icon, which will add one more. And we'll see it gets added just like that. And I'm going to guess what the name of this font is going to be that the uh, system registers. I'm just going to update this to be the name of the font, dropping the .ttf. Whoops. Let's try that one more time. And let's go ahead and run it. And we should see the font is now light, still Roboto. So once again, I mentioned this is pretty error prone. So how do we actually go about uh, making these fonts more reusable so we don't have to type this out every time? especially if uh, you know, your font names are kind of long or weird, it might get a little redundant. A uh, pretty easy way to do this is by creating an extension on UI font. So we're gonna say extension on UI font. And on here, we're gonna create a static function. And we, let's say we wanna say Roboto light and pass in a size. We can do that and then we can have it return a UI font optional. And you guessed it, and here we can say UI font. And basically what we were using before, which is, uh, uh, I believe, Roboto dash light, and then pass in the size in here, just like that. And then similarly, we're gonna create another one. And you could consolidate this to be one function uh, if you support all the different weights of a font. But we're gonna say bold italic with the given size. And we're gonna copy this guy from here. And that's gonna get pasted right in there. And now what we can actually go ahead and do is instead of doing this whole nonsense here and making this redundant, we can just say this size, let's say 22. And you can actually even shorthand it. You don't even need to do UI font. A, it's more legible and B, it's type safe because you only have one place where you're you know, doing this uh, string. So. Here we see the bold italic font. And pretty similarly, we can change it. Whoops, we can change it to Roboto Light. Go ahead and hit Command R. And just like that, it's now Roboto Light. So before we wrap up here, one thing I'll mention is notice that these functions return UI font optional. Now, why is that? It's because when you construct a UI font object with your own name here, let's say we made a typo. What do you think happens? What happens is that this function actually returns nil. And when it returns nil, it doesn't actually use the font. It uses a, uh, the system font as a, as a backup. So if you don't want this to be nil and you want to have a default, what I usually do is I usually say system font and I provide in a value just like that. And that way, if for whatever reason we make a typo or the font can't be supported, we go ahead and coalesce, AKA a default value is provided for the font. And there you have it. That's how you can bring in custom fonts into your iOS app. Fonts obviously are important to how your app looks. You wanna make sure they're consistently used across different 
screens and view controllers and they really make your app stand out. So that said, if you haven't done so already, make sure you destroy the like button as per usual, helps out with the YouTube algorithm, video engagement, all that good stuff. Comment down below if you use custom fonts, do you think it's worth it? Should we stick with Apple's San Francisco fonts? And uh, of course, hit subscribe while you're at it if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, and want to stick around for daily Swift uploads. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.